What's this? Huh? Look at that huge disc in the distance. Hold on. What? That's the best description you can come up with? It's way, way bigger than that! Huh. Well, it seems our theory checked out. In my humble legal opinion, that's almost certainly the magical device I've been looking for. It really showed up. But if this really is the fantastic compass, it's so huge! How the heck am I gonna lug that back to my office? <clears throat> I mean, come on, Yenfei. Don't give up now. Let's investigate the area first. <gasps> what the... Are they... Are they treasure hoarders? They look familiar. Oh, yeah. I bumped into these rapscallions a few days ago. Incinerate! You're open! There's a smaller disc here. Judging from the appearance and design... Hmm. In all likelihood, this is the Fantastic Compass. Why is there a small version of the Fantastic Compass stuck in the ground? What's it for? Uh huh? No entrance. Great! You're open! Yikes! Easy. Just like last time. You know, when I ran into them before, I was working on a big commercial case. The defendant hired them to attack me, just to get back at me. Eh, happens all the time. Luckily, I'm well trained in martial arts, so taking them down was a piece of cake. But these are the exact same guys as I met last time. Is this space recreating scenes from my memory? Maybe this is one of the ways our adversary intends to devour us. Unbelievable.
this a tunnel? Uh, this is weird. It feels like it's connecting to another world. Or maybe another time. I thought we might run into some other people here. But apparently not. The Fatui? Whose memory is this? Uh, watch out! <laughs> Just as I thought. Kaelon, you're here! I will take you down no matter how many times you show up. Hey, relax. We're together now. Frozen. Incinerate! After me. <laughs> You've still got it. Remember how I said I'd seen some illusions myself? Those were the same words I heard last time. The space seems to be reproducing that memory. Now that you know, at least we're all on the same page. He said the word fantastic. Was he talking about the fantastic compass? Yenfei, see that thing on the ground? Yeah, we tinkered with it. That's how we met up with you. I guess it's a miniature version of the Fantastic Compass in the distance. It has a close connection to the entire space. Hmm. It looks somewhat familiar. Let me think.
another new space. If everywhere within this space follows the same rules, there must be another small fantastic compass somewhere around here. Osatius, I can't believe someone like you would end up as a lost soul underground. No enemies. Hold on. Wait, is the enemy hiding itself? Oh no, we should go help him. Stay back! This is my fight. Do not come near me. Filthy monsters! So many people have died at your hands! I lured you here to this underground space because I found your weakness. Hiding and ambushing from the dark is Bosatius' signature tactic. Die here with me! <sighs> How did a valiant warrior like you die here? No matter. I know how this ends. Showing signs of fatigue! Ugh. Bosatius, Marshal Vritris, even your strength is finite. But your illusion is not as mighty as you. This is not you in all your glory. I wonder what Rex Lapis would think if he saw what had become of the first Yaksha. Leave! I'll deal with the rest. We can't let the monsters get to the surface. Everyone, remember, we must hold the line at 60 miles outside the chasm at all costs. Be gone! Chell, are you okay? This is my purpose. Don't worry about me. So your invisible opponent was the legendary Bosatius, Marshal Vitris? Yes. So excuse my stubbornness. Osatius has been... This may have been the last time I will ever see him. He was saying something about holding the line at all costs. He fought here. The nameless Yaksha from the legends. It was him. But didn't you say he'd always announce his name? How could his name be lost to time? What happened? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe he forgot who he was. Because the karma you spoke of drove him to madness? Bosatius had already gone mad before he disappeared. There was no way of knowing if his memories were intact. He still took part in the Battle of the Chasm despite having gone mad? We Yakshas are not a race that thrive in peacetime. It's likely that he was drawn by the scent of bloody war. Slaughter is what we do best. Maybe it's the only thing we know. This battle confirmed my suspicions. As we had speculated, this space reflects information from people's minds. In other words, despite going mad, Bosatius came here. The illusion we saw just now is the impression he left behind. This space recreated him as he was during the battle. The way he fought was so self-destructive. He couldn't possibly have survived. Bosatius' illusion said he'd discovered the monster's weakness and lured them underground. What kind of place could this be? Defeating Conria's monsters is no small feat, that's for sure. Guys, it could just be me, but... I think I'm suddenly feeling more tired than I was. 
This space is really starting to affect us. I believe Bosatius stayed here underground. But now he is gone, and only his illusion remains. If we don't leave, we may meet the same fate. Time to move on. You fought well, Bosatius. Goodbye.
like there's some information here. Shall we take a look? Okay, let's see. It looks like these were letters written by the Millilith soldiers who stayed here. So, who's this Boyang they mentioned? <sighs> Boyang was one of my ancestors. The one who didn't make it back. You mean, Boyang fought alongside Bosatius? I believe so. And the Millilith soldiers were their brothers in arms. I guess now we have a pretty good idea of where everyone that went missing ended up. Yes. Uh, so scary. What happened? Come on, let's not stay here. I have a gut feeling that sooner or later we'll connect all the dots. And then, we'll finally know the truth. Still, who knows how this space is planning on revealing the answer to us. What a creepy space. It has the feel of the abyss. But where are the opponents? Hmm. Your memory of what? The abyss? So this place is created purely based on your memory? other spaces, the Fantastic Compass was always partially buried in the ground. But this one is lying flat, intact, as if somebody left it here. Oh, she was just a figment of your imagination? So, she appeared as an illusion because you miss her so much, huh? Hmm. Yenfei. Are you sure this is the fantastic compass you're looking for? I think so. There were no pictures in the will, but based on the description, it seems to check out. Yelon? What is it? From the design and build, 
This fantastic compass looks extremely similar to the catalysts used by my clan. I just need to do this, and... <laughs> Someone's used this before. There may be a hidden message inside. Let's get out of here and find somewhere safer. All right, here we'll be fine. Take a moment to catch your breath while I try to unlock the fantastic compass. Now that I've found the fantastic compass, my work here is done. But if the bosatius we saw was just an illusion, Will we really be able to take anything we find here back to the outside world? <sighs> hmm. Within Yin and Yang, among the five regions, water, fire, wind, and thunder cycle like the seasons. Grasp the seven heavens from the ground. Open wide the three gates. All the worlds within reach. Well, well. This is not what I was expecting. Oh! Seems like you've made a new discovery! This information was left by a thaumaturge called Boyang, who, as you know, is the missing ancestor that I came here to investigate. All this information... it was left by your ancestor? Hundreds of years ago, two of my ancestors, brothers, were gifted the Fantastic Compass by someone of great importance. They brought this device to the chasm, and joined the war against the monsters of Conria. They set out together, but only one of them made it back. Minus his sanity. Karma. <laughs> Correct. One possibility is that when they fought alongside Bosatius, they were tainted by his karma. Neither of them had visions, so they wouldn't have been able to resist its effects for very long. From reading through this, it sounds like Boyong ended up staying here for good too. <laughs> This is just wonderful. So, that's it. There's no way out. What do we do? Are we gonna die here? But Kaima doesn't wanna die! Kaima's had enough of this place! Let me out! Uh... What was that? Huh? <clears throat> I got it! I just had a thought. Give me a second, I just need to double check. Huh? 
Ajá. Traveler, I just realized something. Okay, so on my way here, I was studying the will the whole time. But I didn't give any thought to the book that the will was inside of. I don't know it verbatim, but I have read it before. The gist of the story goes like this. Millennia ago, an Adeptus made a magic device to seal away evil monsters. Later, he made good friends with a human and gave the device to him to use as a catalyst. A few years later, great demons haunted the mountains. The mortal and the Adeptus joined forces to exorcise them using the same device. And that's not all. The book also says this. When mortal and Adepti powers are combined, one can move the heavens and shake the earth. This contraption is proof that mortals and Adepti may coexist, that there is unity between heaven and humanity. I have both Adepti and human lineage. Maybe my power can work. It worked! I mean, the effect only lasted an instant because I'm not strong enough, but still, we must be on the right track. And look, something seems to have been activated inside the Fantastic Compass. By heaven's might and the gods of the five regions, Yaksha and mortal together take this contraption in hand. That's their voices from when they made the seal. Bosatius and my ancestor. They sealed off this space at the top together. Hmm. I see. It makes sense now. Everyone, let's go back and meet up with Ito and Shinobu. I have a suggestion to make. Paimon can barely move anymore. Why oh, oh, can't we get out of here? Paimon doesn't want to die. Paimon wants to stay with you. Paimon, just hang in there, okay? Trust me, there's still hope. Let's go. Shinobu, Ito, we're back! He must be exhausted, because he still hasn't woken up yet. But he's not in any serious danger, so don't worry. What about you guys? You found something, didn't you? It's written on your faces. But whatever it is, it's bad news, isn't it? Um... We found the Fantastic Compass. The previous owner left a message inside, and from the looks of it, there really is no way out of this space after all. It seems like the previous owner was stuck here forever, too. <sighs> Shoot! This isn't over yet. Listen to me. Just now, I tried channeling my power into the Fantastic Compass, and it responded. But all that did was activate the records from when the seal was created. Right, but the issue wasn't with the compass, it was with the method. Remember what the book says? When mortal and adepti powers are combined, one can move the heavens and shake the earth. Only when a mortal and an adeptus combine their powers can the fantastic compass be fully activated. I'm a mix of human and adeptus, so the fact that the fantastic compass responded to me shows that the system is still functional. Lucky for us, we also happen to have a full Adeptus and a human with training in the magic arts. Interesting. So that's what was going through your head. 
So, an Adeptus and a human need to channel their power at the same time? Yes, if my guess is correct, then when both of you put your full power into the Fantastic Compass, we should be able to completely reactivate it, maybe even reverse it. Last time, it was used to seal the intersection between this place and the chasm. If we can reverse it... Then we're home free. Awesome! So there's still hope? You bet. <sighs> Your idea seems reasonable. Okay, well let's all take a quick break. We'll give this thing a try once we're ready. Oh boy, Paimon's so nervous! Yelon, Xiao, how are we looking? I'm all set. I'm ready. Oh, but Yenfei, there's one thing you might need to mentally prepare yourself for. Hmm? Huh? I'm afraid you probably won't be able to take the Fantastic Compass out of here. From what I can tell, everything within this domain is the result of disordered space-time and memories. We all came here for different purposes, and everything that's happened here has been in response to our own imaginations and conjecture. Terrifying, but also a miracle. This space... well, it's more than just a space. Whether there's some kind of higher power at work here, I don't know, but... The whole time, it's been reading our minds and responding to us in the form of illusions. Also, according to the history of the chasm, this place must have existed for a very long time. What could have created it? Oh, that. Yeah, I was there too. Huh? Wait a second. It was you that shot that arrow? Who else did you think it was? That snake is probably a remnant of Conrion's civilization. And crystals are highly effective against it. Maybe there was... some sort of opposing reaction between those two forces? <sighs> if so... I'm extremely sorry, everyone. It looks like I might be the one responsible for all of this. No, no! You're just trying to help us and solve the problem! You're definitely not to blame for what happened! <laughs> if you say so. You could almost liken this bizarre space to a living being that throws all kinds of hallucinations at us to deceive us. Everyone we've seen here, and all the paths we've walked, it all ceased to exist 500 years ago. Additionally, most of the things here are static. So if we really do manage to escape, then once time starts moving normally again, the fantastic compass will likely disappear. That's actually what I think, too. That's precisely why it's such a miracle that we even found the fantastic compass to begin with. This whole thing feels like we're breaking free from our shackles using a spear that by rights should not exist. This is a long shot, but it may be our last chance. So, whose wish was it that summoned this device? Perhaps it was. But maybe there's another reason. Your incredibly strong commitment to your search. It's a shame that we couldn't find your family, but if they were here... I'm sure they'd want nothing more than to see you being rescued from this place. I gotta say, it does intrigue me, the way we all ended up here together. If this is fate, then let's grab it in our hands and turn it around. Leave the boss to Ushi and me. We're ready. Traveler, take care of Paimon. Yenfei, you might need to come closer to me when the time comes. Sure. <sighs> Stars align, bestow your light, evil purged by thunder's might. Spirit curbed, new must surge, by dictum divine, heed these words. Do as I command! Uh, Aha! Uh -huh. The 
fantastic compass is an amplifier. Maintain this energy level, and we may stand a chance. I will maintain the energy flow. Understood. Everyone, stand back. I shall hold the line by sealing the surface. As Yakshas, we must fight for this world. General Alatus, falling in! Watch out! This trip may be dangerous, yet you insist on going. I have guarded this place for several hundred years. Only to seek the nameless Yaksha do I request your approval. Hmm. <sighs> I was close. I thought you were gonna get left behind. I'm so glad you're okay. That was terrifying. <sighs> I know what you were thinking, but... Never mind. I know I can't talk you out of a mindset that's been built up over a lifetime. I don't think we were ever going to reach an agreement over the final strategy. But in the end, it was thanks to you that we managed to escape. 
So, thank you for saving us all. Mm. No, I could not have done this on my strength alone. Don't mention it. Looks like everyone got out unscathed, but you all look pretty exhausted. Rest up. There's no hurry to move on from here. As for me, I'm gonna check the area for any unusual activity. She's gone! Paimon didn't even get to say thank you! <sighs> Maybe Aelon really doesn't believe she made a contribution. It seems like she's convinced Zhao saved us all, including her, and she doesn't know what to say to that. And since it's not easy to persuade Xiao of anything, maybe Aelon's just given up trying to talk to him. Xiao, she's criticizing you! I am not! You speak only the truth. I have no quarrel with that. I will keep your words in mind. Really? Well, that's great! I count that as quite an achievement. It was a perilous situation we were faced with underground, and it took every single one of us for any of us to make it out alive. I feel lucky that we didn't lose anyone along the way. Hey, so... Bull Checker still hasn't woken up yet. Surely he's not gonna stay asleep forever. Let's go check on him. Ah, <sighs> I slept like a rock. Ugh, good times. Huh? Uh, what you doing? What's going on? Why are you looking at me like that? Are you in any pain? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. The head? What about it? Is there any brain damage from the impact? You need to tell us if you're not feeling well. You weren't that bright to begin with, so if we add brain damage to the equation... Oh, brother. What the heck are you guys talking about? I'm fine! I had an epic power nap, and now I feel like a million mora. Huh. I feel like I'm forgetting something, though. Uh... Oh, yeah! Wait, weren't we underground? How did we get back up here? It's a long story. We'll fill you in later. Ito, we're indebted to you, Shinobu, and Ushi. We couldn't have escaped this predicament without your help. I'm the reason you all got caught up in this. Please accept my apologies, and let me find some way to compensate you for the trouble. Bah, crazy talk! You helped us first! Of course we're gonna return the favor. Hey, if it weren't for you, we'd still be in a Liyue jail cell right now. That's not quite correct. You'd be in jail, not me. Uh. <laughs> Good point. Well, okay then. How about this? To celebrate our newfound friendships, how about you let me take you to Leah Harbor for some sightseeing and a proper meal? I like the sound of that. Now that you mention it, whew, I am famished. Oh, I can barely walk here. I'm hungry too, Senpai. Why don't we head straight over? Paimon too! Paimon wants to come too! Huh? Ugh, fine! Alright, well, I promise I'll take good care of your friends from Inazuma. Take it easy, okay? What we just went through was... a lot. <laughs> oh, wait! Yelon left already. I was gonna treat her to some tea. But I'll take this to mean we're square. <laughs> Hmm? Oh, yeah? Is that right? Wow. Okay, I'll let him know. Traveler, Flying Lavender Melon, Ushi has a couple words he'd like you to pass on for him. What? Oh, I want to hear this. Me too. Count me in. Good idea! Let's do that! Paimon never would have guessed that Ushi was so gentle and thoughtful. Never judge a bull by its cover, huh? Oh. Ah, 
sometimes the profoundest truths can also be the simplest. I think Ushi's words may well come in handy. You betcha! Just leave it to us! All right, Ito, Shinobu, Ushi, let's go. Oh, yeah! Grub time! See you next time. <sighs> Finished taking care of business? Oh, there wasn't any business. We were just saying goodbye to our friends. <laughs> You're still here. I saw the two Inazumans leave with Yenfei, heading towards Liyue Harbor. Aren't you going with them? We still had some stuff we wanted to say to Xiao. Hmm, I figured as much. I've checked the area. Nothing strikes me as out of the ordinary. Looks like this chapter has come to a close. Now, I just need to take care of the confidentiality issues. <laughs> Let's- Uh, we got it! We got it! We'll make sure they don't say anything! Please don't hurt them. Oh... You figured me out, huh? <laughs> Alright, I'll quit pulling your leg. Everyone really rose to the occasion this time. I won't ever forget what we went through. Where could that strange space have come from? And how has it existed down there undetected for so many years? I have to investigate this further. I have a feeling that whatever lies behind all this runs deep. Maybe so deep that no one can be allowed to know. Also, I think someone helped us out at the last minute. They did a good deed, of course, but... Somehow I couldn't tell anything about them. It must have been someone of great importance. <sighs> anyway, these questions will have to wait for another time. I have some follow-up work to do and reports to make. So it's back to Liyue Harbor for me. See you when I see you. Bye, Yelan! You knew I was waiting for you? Really? Hmm. <laughs> There's somewhere I want to go. If you have the time, you can join me. Where is it? A place that has to do with the Yakshas. The temple up ahead was built to remember Pervases. Maybe I came here because I had a realization. You mean, back when we were underground? It's hard to put into words. Seeing Bosatius gave me the false impression that I'd traveled back into the past. You could dress up the Yaksha's life and call us valiant warriors, veterans of war. But, the truth is, we are slaughterers. And nothing more. For Bosatius, perhaps dying in the heat of a great battle was no tragedy. And perhaps the same is true for me. After living so long, to die in the act of saving others would not have been a terrible thing. Hmm. So maybe... These thoughts are my own form of insanity. Hey! Say that. Oh, yeah! Ushi wanted us to tell you! It's very important. Hmm? Ushi said he has the power to exercise demons, so people use him to fend them off. But after he met Ito, he's never left his side. He also said that he doesn't have any grand philosophies. He just thinks we should spend our lives around the people who make us happiest. 
Maybe there aren't so many rules about how we should or shouldn't live our lives in this world after all. So, he hopes you can come to understand that even though the power of a yaksha may be harmful to other people, it doesn't mean you shouldn't hang out with them. Yep, like people with visions. They have more resistance against your power, right? And, and... Well, anyway, there's loads of people out there who really care about you. <sighs> Suddenly you sound a lot like Bosatius and the others. They used to talk about how they hoped to live a mortal's life once the world was at peace. I think... I was the only one who didn't think that way. The Bosatius recorded in the Fantastic Compass had lost his sanity. He addressed the people around him as Alatus, Minogius, and others. These are the names of the five Yakshas. I am Alatus, and Minogius is General Capesis. The others are Bonanus, or General Chizapis, and Indarius, or General Musatis. I heard that people call the five of us Yakshas, the Guardian Adepti. <laughs> Bosatius and Yelon's ancestors stayed underground to the end. So that space must have read their minds in their last moments as they approached death. Yelon was right in everything she said. Both of our proposals had their drawbacks, and both were sensible suggestions. But the power of that space was far beyond all of us. I couldn't have done all I did without everyone's help. Even in the final moments, it took every bit of my power to break free from that place. Well, Paimon still thinks you were amazing. Yenfei and Yelan are correct. I always prepare for the worst case scenario. This mindset is deeply rooted in me. Even so, it was the most optimistic solution I could think of. If Rex Lapis hadn't saved me in that moment, I don't think I would have been able to escape. In the end, I still had to burden another. But that's how it should be, right? You've known Zhang Li, uh, Rex Lapis, for such a long time. And you've helped him before, so he helped you back. What's the big deal? Perhaps. In the moment that we escaped from that space, I could sense what was left of Bosatius's memory. If I had to say what I gained from this trip, I think that would be it. It's good that one more person will remember him. Mm, Minogius, where have you been? <sighs> Brother Yaksha, you're confused again. I've told you countless times, I am Boyang, a thaumaturge who fought with you in the chasm. Boyang? Boyang? You are Boyang, but who am I? <laughs> Believe me, I want to know as much as you do. Here we are, the two who agreed to stay here together, and I can't even call you by your name. It's a shame. Stay here? No. No, you have to leave. Uh, nonsense, Brother Yaksha. We're down here for good now. Don't you remember? It's too late to have regrets. The seal can't be broken. The seal... Ah, oh, yes. I'm a Yaksha who came here to fight. Brother, brother, are you okay? <laughs> Look at the state of me. I don't think I've got long now. <laughs> We're the only two left. Don't go dying on me. <sighs> you know, today I saw my family down here. Clear as day. What do you think? Am I losing my mind now, too? Hmm. Boyong. Do you want to go home? I made my decision to leave Zhong Zhao up on the surface. I obviously... <sighs> of course.
course I want to go home. I must have family too. You mean brothers and sisters? I'm sure you do. Brothers and sisters. Yes, but who am I? And where is my family? I'm... Brother! What's wrong? Hang in there. It's just you and me, don't... Don't die before me. Alatus, is that you? Who's Alatus? Your memory's going again. <coughs> I'm sorry. You all have to see me in this state. Brother! Brother! Look, there's someone over there. Who are they? They're... They're my... My... Remember now, I know you. <laughs> My brothers and sisters have come for me, Boy Young. You're, you're awake. At least, at least tell me your name. Brother, Brother Bosatius. <laughs> hey, Bosatius. <laughs> Bosatius. I... I am Bosatius, and my destiny is to make the ultimate sacrifice. I've said so much today, but I don't need to hold back as much when I talk to you. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like you were aware of your destiny? The potential of life, the approach of death, whatever it might have been. By now, I have accepted that destiny is the one disaster that the Yaksha know most keenly of all. We are destined to misery. And yet, we have no fear. Xiao... It matters not. Rex Lapis had said that you are a witness. It is right that the events of the world are relayed to you. Bonanus, Minogius, and Indarius all perished, and only Bosatius' fate was unknown. This has always stung my heart like a thorn. That is why I went to the chasm, despite being fully aware of the danger. Now that I know what happened in the chasm back then, I can finally put this matter to rest. Before we left that place, I picked up a stone. I thought if I could take it out with me, I would place it in the temple to Pervases in memory of Bosatius. Unfortunately, the stone did not survive. Pervases died in the Archon War thousands of years ago. He was younger than us, and Bosatius was very sad when he passed. Too many Yakshas have become casualties of battle. We are like a flock of birds, scattered to the four corners of the world. And in the end, as Bonanna said, it's rare for a Yaksha to find repose for their soul. Bosatius, Boyang, and all those soldiers. Heroes. I like that word. Maybe the world will never be free of disaster. But there is good in the world, too. Even the darkest hearts have room for those they cherish. I accept your advice. From this day on, heroes will always look out for each other.
I created another universe and founded paradise. For I, Fischl, and the princess and de- Traveler, Paimon, it's been a long time. Oh, hey, Hoisin. Long time to see. Fancy meeting you here. How's work these days? Thanks to the help of people like you and colleagues like Ganyu, better all the time. But I've been feeling distracted at work lately. I just feel constantly agitated. <sighs> It's a long story. But my father, he's thinking of stepping down from the Tianshu position due to health issues. Huh? What's wrong with Uncle Tian? Nothing specifically. He's not unwell. He says he's just increasingly low on energy these days. He's always said old age comes for us all in the end. Still, I just can't help but feel a little emotional watching it happen to him. Anyway, my father's currently on the second floor of Yangsheng Tea House. Why don't you come pay him a visit with me? He seems very fond of you two. I'm sure chatting with you will make him very happy. Sure, let's go! What a lovely surprise. Welcome. Hoishin, why don't you go downstairs and get the shopkeeper to make us a fresh pot of tea? I heard that you've been traveling all over the place recently. I would very much like to hear your adventure stories. Hoishin told you, didn't she? Don't worry. I'm quite all right. It's just the years gradually catching up with me. As I grow older, I'm starting to find that with many things, though the mind is willing, the flesh is weak. Especially recently, I've noticed a rather drastic drop in my energy levels. I am still very much in good standing as the Tianshu today. Nevertheless, I wish to pass on the position before my mental acuity begins to decline beyond redemption. How difficult is it to transfer the Tianshu position? Oh, well, you see, the Tianshu is a rather unique position among the Liyue Qixing. 
Historically speaking, the Tian Shu rarely appears in public. We stay behind the scenes, planning and giving advice. So a public selection process would not be suitable. We also want to keep any prospective Tian Shu candidates free from influence by outside forces. So we tend to be as discreet as possible in their assessment and appointment. For these reasons, the incumbent Tianshu typically recommends their candidate of choice, and this is then approved by the other Qixing members. So in other words, you pick someone, and then Lady Keqing, Lady Mingguang, and the other Qixing appoint them? Correct. Unfortunately, due to my health, I won't be able to assess every candidate myself. Not to despair, however, because I found someone exceptionally capable to act on my behalf as assessment officer. <laughs> In fact, I believe you recently became acquainted with her yourself. Oh? Who is it? I'm heartbroken. I thought it might take you a little longer than this to forget all about me. Jackpot. Uncle Tian here asked me to assess three candidates for him. Fancy joining me? You'll be among the first to get to know the next Tian Shu. Might be a good opportunity for you. Hmm. What do you think? Paimon thinks so too. It can't be a bad thing to be on good terms with the new Qixing, right? Alright then. Though, I gotta say, Uncle Tian, you say you're into behind-the-scenes planning? My work's of the covert variety, too. Don't you think I might make a good Tianshu? Huh? Yeon, you want to be the next Tianshu? I'm not opposed to the idea, but I suspect Ningguang wouldn't let you go very easily after how long you've been working together. So, how about this? If your investigation reveals that none of the other candidates are qualified for the position, I'll recommend you for the job. Deal. Well, you guys take your time. Everything's all set for the assessments to go ahead. Meet me on the first floor when you're ready. Until then, have a pleasant conversation. Oh, and no need to pay for your tea. As the new owner of this fine establishment, this runs on the house. You're all set? Uncle Tian seems really worn down. It's like all his energy's gone. Yeah, it may sound harsh, but Uncle Tian is past his prime. He's not cut out for this anymore. So he's recommended three candidates. Their names are Qin Wei, Mingguo, and Zhe Yi. Qin Wei is a wealthy entrepreneur. Mingguo works at the Liu Wei Ministry of Civil Affairs, and Zhe Yi is focused on study and travel. Try to keep all that in mind. <laughs> of course, it doesn't really matter if you forget, since we'll be assessing them at Yue High Pavilion in a short while. Qian Wei, Mingbo, Zhe Yi. Paimon should be able to remember their names, but what does the assessment involve exactly? Let's leave that until we get to Yue High Pavilion. Alright. Heads in the game, people. The stakes don't get much higher than a change in the Qixing. We can't afford to miss anything, no matter how small. Got it! We'll keep our eyes wide open! Consumer psychology. Jewelry's out of stock, but we have some new items in.
not. My legs are getting sore. What is wrong with this assessment officer? This is a huge occasion and I don't even get a chair. I've dealt with all kinds of people in my time, but never have I been made to stand while I'm waiting for an appointment. Oh, I mean, uh, I, I think it's fine. That's called being complacent. If you're happy to just accept the way things are, you'll never be able to change anything in the future. Oh, come on. That's just... Now you're just... being unreasonable. All right, you two. Let's not get into a big argument over this. It's not worth it. Qianwei, that was a bit uncalled for. And Mingbo, cut him some slack. We've all been standing around for a while. It's natural to be getting irritable. Look, how about this? There's no rule saying we're obliged to stand up while we wait, so why don't we borrow some chairs from the guild nearby? Fine. Ugh, they're not the best quality chairs, to be sure. But under the circumstances, it would be better than nothing. It looks like all three candidates have arrived. Mm-hmm. We'll meet them formally soon. Before that, let me run you through the assessment process. I've split it into two stages. Current affairs and planning, and face-to-face -face interview. In the first stage, candidates are required to submit a manifesto for Liyue's development. In the second stage, we will ask them some questions in person. Writing a manifesto takes time, so I informed them of this requirement in advance. These are the reports they submitted. Wow! One of them is really thick! It's also worth mentioning a stipulation I gave them. Whoever is appointed as the new Tianshu will be expected to implement their plan as put forward in their manifesto. Failing the occurrence of some cataclysmic event, they will not be permitted to change their plan. Therefore, these three piles of documents in front of us represent where each candidate stands on key policy issues. There's still some time. Have a skim through. Get a first impression of what each person's proposing. I'll be waiting off to the side. Just let me know when you're done. Finished, huh? What did you think? Everyone took it very seriously. Of course they did. They have the chance to be picked as the new Tianshu, so you can bet they're putting their best foot forward. And keep in mind, whoever gets in has to execute their plan as written. Nobody wants to have any regrets. <laughs> That's for me to know and you to find out. We can talk more after the interviews. We'll see the candidates now. Let's do one at a time. Start with Chen Wei. Yes, ma'am. Oh? So you two are the assessment officers, are you? I had assumed that given the great import of this situation, Lady Ningguang would perhaps be assessing us in person. 
I certainly hadn't imagined I'd be seeing two entirely unfamiliar faces. I trust you've read through my manifesto? I'd be more than happy to clarify any details you found difficult to grasp. It was written with an expert audience in mind, after all. Mind your tone, mister! Relax. It wasn't intended as a personal slight against anyone in particular. I was simply stating a fact. Cloud Retainer? You know this Adeptus? Oh, yes, I remember now. You must be the traveler that people are constantly talking about. With your sterling reputation, you must have a respectable level of erudition. Perhaps you will be able to understand the concepts I have put forward. Yeah, although I shouldn't get my hopes up. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Please, introduce yourself. I'm, uh, Mingbo. I work in the Ministry of Civil Affairs. I've worked there for, um, nine years, five months, and three days. In that time, I've handled, uh, 2,347 cases. I have 12 active cases at the moment. They should be concluded in, uh, 16 days? My current work is related to urban planning, and I'm also responsible for, uh, auditing the accounts. To be more precise, there are three parts to the accounts, namely... Uh, is it just Paimon, or is he not very good at public speaking? You know what? Let's leave the self-introduction there and move on to some questions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little nervous. What would you like to know? You're here to assess me, so ask away and I'll answer your questions to the best of my ability. Your manifesto is very wide in its scope, but you don't seem to be personally involved in many of the specific fields. How can you be sure that you have the ability to put your plan into action? Very fair question. I completely understand where you're coming from. But I'm confident in my plan. I've visited many different places, talked to lots of people with far more expertise than myself, and my manifesto is the conclusion of these efforts. Of course, two different problems can be interconnected in very complicated ways, and you might reach two very contradictory conclusions depending on which one you're focusing on. What I've tried to do is strike a balance. In other words, present an optimal solution to all the problems as a whole. How do you plan to determine whether you are right or wrong about your proposed solution being the optimal one? A great question. Well, I'd start by having my colleagues and the secretaries of the UA High Pavilion evaluate any proposals before implementation. Post-implementation, it would all come down to the results. If it turned out that my judgment was to blame for poor results, I would take responsibility. Hmm. Nice answer. All right, next question. Like a great guy. Everything he said was thoughtful and logical, and he was just a pleasure to listen to. Here's my take on what we just learned. As you saw, Chen Wei is highly knowledgeable. He proposes many excellent ideas in his manifesto, which effectively target the big issues. But he is very proud and incredibly stubborn. He doesn't care much about other people's feelings. Mingbo's plan is more thorough and more measured. You can tell he's meticulous in his work, very detail-oriented. But he and Chen Wei are otherwise polar opposites. Mingbo is not very articulate and comes across as very timid in conversation. Perfect summary! Paimon couldn't agree more! You're good at this, Yiwan. Last but not least, Jur Yi. His manifesto is full of pertinent details, his methodology is sound, and his proposals cover a broad range of fields, which is quite a rare feat. The depth he goes into in each and every area means it can only be a product of painstaking work. Plus, he is modest and good at dealing with people. But, what really interests me is that many of his views happen to coincide with Uncle Tien's. Having someone like Jur Yi take the position would certainly put Uncle Tien's mind at rest. Great! We'll see. 
Let's go back and report to Uncle Tien. see, then it's more or less as I anticipated. All right, then let me ask this. The ideas in jur -E's manifesto are very similar to your own. Is there any particular reason behind this? Oh, I didn't want to say anything when I gave you the list of candidates, for fear of affecting your judgment. <laughs> but I can tell you now, those three candidates have all studied under me in the past. It's only natural that they share some similarities with me. But Xin Wei went on to focus on his business, and Ming Bo has always been occupied with his work at the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Of all of them, Jiri was with me for the longest duration. Oh, so how did you get to know them all, Uncle Tian? Chen Wei was referred to me by an old friend. Ming Guo came to my attention in the course of my work. And <laughs> as for Jiri, that <laughs> uh, was pure happenstance. We first met while fishing. Gradually, as we got to know each other, we started discussing all sorts of topics. Jiri came from a poor family, and his parents died when he was very young. But he was a gifted student and a fast learner. He reminded me of a younger version of myself. So I started out giving him a few words of advice when we were out fishing and noticed how quickly he got on. Quite. And now, all of a sudden... He's grown into a mature young man. It's a joy to see, but it also gets one thinking. The young are growing up, and I am growing old. How time flies. No one can escape the cycle of life. I don't know, Uncle Tian. You still seem in pretty good shape to me. You might have another few years of work left in you, don't you think? Oh, you. <laughs> There's really no need to console me. Having less energy than I used to isn't a, such a bad thing. It, it just means I finally have a good reason to retire and spend my days doing what old men like me should be doing. Going fishing whenever I feel like it. Sounds like you sure love fishing, Uncle Tian. Ooh, there's nothing quite like fishing to pass the time. <laughs> Ooh, and freshly caught fish? Ah, they make the most beautiful fish soup with barely any preparation required. Fresh fish soup. Mmm, sounds tasty. Doesn't it? <laughs> also, some time ago. Jury purchased a very special recipe from an old fisherman. When we've been fishing recently, Jury always brings some extra ingredients he prepared in advance. Oh, the addition of these makes the soup taste even more wonderful. That flavor makes for a fond memory. But at my age, who knows how many more chances I have left to taste it again. Let's get back to the matter at hand. Uncle Tian, 
We've reported back. Do you have a verdict? Mm-hmm. I appointed you as the assessment officer, and I trust your judgment. Had you not asked me why Jury's ideas were so similar to mine, I was not going to mention my history with any of them. This decision must be guided by what is fair and right. Please disregard all other considerations and make your final decision only after a thorough review of each candidate's talents and capabilities. Remember, you must be thorough. Understood. Come on, let's go talk somewhere else. Bye-bye, Uncle Tien. Look after yourself. So, it's gonna be Jerry, right? His manifesto was written well, and he's the best speaker. Easy. Let's not rush. There's no time limit for this assessment. Huh? So, are you gonna give them more tests or something? No, nothing like that. The assessment itself is complete. But let me give you a word of advice. Things are not always as they appear. The biggest no-no in intelligence work is to only get information from the person of interest themselves. The truth is almost always hidden beneath many layers of deception. You have to get information through many different channels. For example... Wen Yuan, Shanghua. Yes? Lady Yelan, what are your orders? Ugh! Who are they? Where did they come from? Did they scare you? These two are Wen Yun and Shang Hua. They work for me. As my trusted assistants, they are always standing guard nearby. They also perform various assignments as required. Shang Hua is a business expert who gets his information by trading. Wen Yuan relies on word of mouth. And there's also Wu Pei, who's not here right now. That meathead must have been out there on sea surveillance for some time now. Is he alright? I seem to remember that he can't swim. <sighs> Nothing can take that guy down. Certainly not a little wind and waves. Shenghua, visit all the commerce guilds and look into Qianwei's background. Wen Yuan, go to the Ministry of Civil Affairs and look through Mingbo's work files. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, so what about Juri? Juri, well, obviously as the most promising candidate. We will be investigating him ourselves. Let's go to the docks first. Lots of people passing through there. You can find out all kinds of things. If we're looking for information, why don't we try talking to Bulai, the owner of Wanyu Boutique? He does business at the North Wharf. Maybe he has some news for us. Hmm. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's go and ask him. Look, your asking price for this batch is just too high. I can't buy in at this price. How am I supposed to turn a profit? Come on, hear me out. I'm telling you, this is the single best batch of Sunsetias ever. You won't find anyone who disputes that. I accidentally dropped one into a well, and even the water turned sweet. Even so... <laughs> alright, alright. I'll let you in on a little secret. The boss of Second Life also wants to buy from me, but I haven't responded yet. If you won't take him, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. <laughs> okay, well, when you put it that way, I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life. Oh, what are you doing here? 
Uh, and to be clear, these Sunsetias are mine. I got to them first. Don't get any ideas. Actually, we want to ask you about a guy called Juri. Have you heard of him before? Juri? Yes, he's quite well known. I've heard a story about him. They say he was born into poverty. His parents died when he was young, and he was treated cruelly by the local community. One of his neighbors was terribly rude to him all the time, but Juri never retaliated. And when his neighbor went bankrupt, he even helped support the family. He returned cruelty with kindness, oh, injustice with peace offerings, a gentleman of talent and character, and... Uh, oh, how did I not notice him sooner? In fact, maybe I'm not too late. If I could hire him to be the brand ambassador for Wanyo Boutique... Oh, he sounds like a decent man. We can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Why are you asking about him anyway? Uh, you aren't uh, looking for a brand ambassador too, are you? Well then, in that case, the higher bidder takes the... Hmm? Ah, that's Jerry right over there. Why don't we go and talk to him? Where? Where? It's him, all right. Looks like he's chatting with Lean Long. Come on, let's follow them and listen in. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I'll just go and fetch an employment contract. And hey, don't try and cut me out of this. Hey! I understand. Let's walk and talk. So, you are looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so... What are you waiting for? We won't hear anything at this rate. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I understand. Let's walk and talk. So, you are looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of mine, who likes to have a drink now and then... What's the hurry? Don't get too close, or he'll see you. Try not to let him see you. I understand. Let's walk and talk. So, you are looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of mine, who likes to have a drink now and then... He fancies himself as a man of culture, but doesn't care for needless extravagance. So I thought I might buy him a set of high-quality fakes. How very thoughtful of you. Leave it to me, then. Come and collect it at Shigu Antiques whenever is convenient. Thank you very much, Miss Leanlong. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jury. These days, it's quite rare for someone of your standing to still keep up with their old friends. It's nice to see. I'll be sure to pick out a good set for you. You can count on me. Get along really 
very well with everyone. Are you satisfied now, Yelan? Seems like everyone thinks Jerry is a great guy. We shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's go check out the wharf where he usually goes fishing. Ugh. Do we have to? Wait, you're not just trying to dig up some dirt on Juri because you want to be Tianchu yourself, are you? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But hey, if I do become Tianchu, I'll look out for you guys. You'll be able to try all the finest food for free. How does that sound? We will? Well, come on! Off to the South Wharf we go! The wharf is as busy as ever. I hear the anglers here sometimes sell their fish to the nearby fishmongers. Hmm. Well, let's see what Uncle Soon has to say. Welcome. What would you like to buy today? Sorry to interrupt. We're actually members of the, uh, Liyue Anglers Association, and we just wanted to ask a few questions about someone. We've heard about this young man called Jur Yi, who's supposed to be a fantastic fisherman. Just wondering if you happen to have heard of him? Whoa! Yeon made up a whole fake identity! Without Batty and Eyelid! Ah, yes, Jur Yi. He's been making quite a name for himself recently. I've got some friends who travel all over the place, and they tell me everywhere they go they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm, apparently, he had a rather tough time growing up. Had to work several jobs alongside his studies to make ends meet. How does that saying go? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, if there's anything to that logic, he's sure to be phenomenally successful one day. Yeah, we think so too. But I'm afraid your Anglers Association might be in for a disappointment. Oh? Huh? Why is that? He's good at a lot of things, but fishing isn't one of them. He fishes at the wharf and sells what he catches to me on occasion. His catches are always mediocre. Not terrible, but equally nothing to write home about. If you're looking to recruit some new members, though, I do know a few top anglers I could put you in touch with. That sounds fantastic. I've got a couple of other things to attend to right now, though, so why don't I come back some other time and we can chat over a drink? Sure thing. See you. Everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm. Come on, let's keep asking around.
Here to buy some fish? It's 300 for one or three for 1,000. You better hurry. When they're gone, they're gone. Hello, we're from the Society for Fish Price Research. We'd just like to ask a few questions. Wow, she switched identity again! Society for Fish Price Research? Uh, I haven't done anything illegal. Stay out of my business! Please, don't worry. We're just here to conduct a simple survey. We've heard about a certain Jur E who's been selling fresh fish at low prices in this area recently. Do you know anything about this? So this isn't about me. You should have said something, you know. I know the guy. I can tell you what I know. I haven't heard anything about him selling fresh fish at low prices, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was him. Oh? Why is that? Because he's so poor. His parents died when he was a very young, and his alcoholic father still owed a huge amount of debt. No one wanted anything to do with him. He was still a kid when he first came to the wharf. His clothes were ragged, and he had a bandage wrapped around his head. And he managed to survive, thanks to Uncle Tien, who gave him some food. But still to this day, he doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. I mean, he can afford to eat and everything, but... You'll often see him haggling with others over just a few mora, so I wouldn't be surprised to find out he's been selling a few fish. It's not like he catches much anyway, so it's not going to affect my business. Uh, uh, don't, don't tell him I said that. You'd rather he didn't know? Well, I spoke to him once briefly, and I just had a feeling that he really cares what other people think of him. I think he has pretty low self-esteem. But hey, it's hardly my place to say anything. What he's achieved already puts most people to shame. And nobody's perfect. I just wouldn't want to upset him. That's all. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Not a problem. And just for the record, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the price of my fish. The more times you say it, the less convincing it becomes. Hmm... Doesn't have a lot of Mora to his name. Hey, it's you guys! Wait, what's the phrase? Oh yeah, honored to meet you. What brings you to me? The truth is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, who knows everything there is to know. Hence, we sought you out to ask for your guidance. <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? But of course. We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never turns away anyone who comes with questions. Great! <clears throat> so what do you wish to know? Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. Huh? Now she's lying to a kid. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of Jur E? Sure have. You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? I've heard many tales of Jury. E. For example, um, uh. I can't remember. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword-fighting heroes! Oh, I can completely understand that. Then let me ask you this. Do you remember roughly when the grown-ups started talking about Jur E? Oh yeah, I know that! It was about two or three months ago. Before that, people always used to talk about Jur E in a kind of nasty tone of voice. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like him. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. Oh yeah, one other thing. 
These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. They seem like nice people. Oh, definitely. Great! So next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them, too. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would also like to say hi to them. Thank you, ma'am! You're welcome. Well then, fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again! Any of that sounds strange to you? Strange? What was strange about it? Juyi seems to have a great reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gao spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. True. But the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? It almost seems too good to be true. Sudden? Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness, and had to work to support his studies. These are the kinds of things that make someone well-known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top, if you ask me. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about Jur Yi's stories? Clearly they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he wasn't interested in the details. That's the reaction I would expect from any normal person. Plus, there's the fact that all this praise of Jur Yi has only been happening within the last two or three months. His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor, none of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? When you put it like that, it is kinda strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. Jur Yi was born into a poor family. Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game as far as I'm concerned. The problem is... Do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? He's stayed poor his whole life. Everything he's earned he's either spent on studying, traveling, or paying off debts. I don't think he has the mora to pay for a publicity campaign. Right. And that changes everything. It can mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu Ad Shixing. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixing? That sounds serious! What should we do? Even if we ask Ji Yi about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it! First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after taking office, their manifesto tells us their stance on key issues. Whoever is secretly helping Jur Yi must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. So, we should be able to find some hints in Jur Yi's manifesto on who we're dealing with. Come on, let's get back to Yenshang Tea House. Jur Yi's manifesto covers a huge range of topics. Looking for details that don't add up will be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I'll divide the reports into two piles. You take one, I'll take the other. When we're finished, we'll put our heads together. 
Officially, the assessment is already over, and I'll be expected to announce the results before long. So we have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as we can. Yikes! We better hurry! Whatever else Uncle Tian might think of Jur E, the fact remains that he's one of his favorite students. Any evidence he's left is not going to be immediately obvious. We'll have to look carefully and think critically. This reading is giving Paimon a headache. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, looks like I'm the first one back, as usual. I visited all the commerce guilds and gathered a wealth of information. Every time they asked me to leave, but I always had another trick up my sleeve. Don't drag this out. Just tell us your findings. Yes, Lady Elon. To summarize my findings, most people who've had interactions with Qianwei will start out complaining about how proud and arrogant he is, but then go on to give a generally positive appraisal of him. The young master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild said that Qianwei appears arrogant, but he's very scrupulous in the way he works. Once he signs a contract with somebody, he treats them fairly regardless of their background. Who'd have thought? Is it possible that his reputation is fake? Is there any way you can check the accounts of the businesses under his name? In theory, that should be very difficult, but here's the thing. I asked around and found out that almost all of Qianwei's accounts are open to the public. Where he buys from and sells to should be confidential business information, but he doesn't seem interested in protecting it at all. Qianwei often sees business opportunities that others don't, but once he's made enough mora off of it, it's like he gets sick of it and releases all of his trade secrets. It's like he wants people to know that they still can't beat him, even if he shares all of his secrets. The fact that someone like that can still make Mora is pretty infuriating when you think about it. What a strange guy. It's like he's not doing business to make Mora, but instead... To validate his theories. No wonder his manifesto contains so many insights. It's all the result of his first-hand experimentation. I'm back! Huh? Ah, how come you're here? Why do you think? Obviously, because I possess superior skills, and am always one step ahead of the competition. Well, when you're the competition, at least. You... Ugh, whatever. I'm not getting into an argument with you. 
If I hadn't had something else to take care of on the way, I would have been back long before you. Lady Yelan, I have finished investigating Mingbua. Well, we're all ears. The Ministry of Civil Affairs says that Mingbua struggles to get his words out when he gets nervous, especially when he's chatting with strangers. But after a few days of getting to know him, you can pretty much have a normal conversation with him. On the whole, the feedback from the Ministry of Civil Affairs was very positive. He always considers the things that everyone else overlooks. In your opinion, was the Ministry of Civil Affairs' appraisal of Mingbuo at all exaggerated? I don't believe so. Mingbuo is someone who has slowly but surely earned the reputation he has today. According to Miss Yu, the Ministry often gets Mingbuo to take a final look at projects before they're implemented. People feel much more confident in something if it has his stamp of approval. Oh, and also, there was once someone in the ministry who was lying and cheating to try to advance their career. Mingbua gave them the scolding of a lifetime. Apparently, he can be terrifying when he loses his temper. I haven't seen it for myself, though. Whoa, that's hard to imagine. Like I said before, things are not always as they appear. That's what you meant by that. Paimon's starting to get it now. Thank you both. You're free to go now. So, have you finished reading the manifesto? We still have a bit left. <laughs> hmm. I can't see any immediate problems looking at the individual entries. The only one that strikes me as a little unusual is the Chengshu Pool Redevelopment Plan. Chengshu Pool has always been home to many secrets. Plus, Ejdaha once wrought havoc there, so there are even more secrets buried deep underground. At some point, a rumor began to go around that there is great treasure buried beneath Chengshu Pool. A long time ago, with the approval of the Qixing, a mining team conducted an exploratory excavation there. So, did they find any treasure? None. The ruin was completely impenetrable. The only way they could have gotten through the solid rock would have been by blowing it open with a special kind of explosive. The technology wasn't mature enough at that time, so the excavation project was shut down and the treasure became a mere legend. Jur E's manifesto focuses on solving problems, and this treasure hunt seems extremely risky. It seems out of step with the rest of his plans. Still, this one fact alone doesn't tell us much. Everyone wants to get their hands on this treasure. The treasure hoarders, the Fatui, even local Liyue factions. <laughs> Did you find anything? Excavation? Project? Treasure? Did we read anything similar in our half of the manifesto? Oh yeah! Juri said the Blacklist Forge workers should get right a first refusal if any suitable projects come up! Did he now? Well, that makes everything much clearer. So Juri wants the Blackcliff Forge to excavate the treasure of Qiyunshu Pool. Does that mean the Blackcliff Forge is Juri's secret supporter? No, not likely. I've looked into the Blackcliff Forge before. They aren't involved with any powerful factions at present. They do possess some specialized explosives, but it would seem more trouble than it's worth to put so many resources into a risky project like this. Still, since the clues are pointing toward the Black Cliff Forge, we should see where they lead. We may well find something new. Chenwei and Mingbo both turned out to be completely different than what we thought! What about Juri? Is there another side to him too? Oh, I don't like the rain. 
This is the Black Cliff Forge. Let's look around for clues. back it looks like a ledger but it's we don't know who wrote it you think there's a yes look at this rate by the time that'll give them the chance imagine if we didn't suspect anything no red flags if all they did was change some key step that's the advantage when you put it like that so <laughs> that's a question for the newcomers About the newcomers. <sighs> you want them to teach you or something? I gotta say, these newcomers are in tip top shape. Fast learners, too. They're picking up all the skills unbelievably fast. My only complaint is that they're always going out drinking at night, but they never let us join them. I guess they just need some time to adjust. I'm sure we'll get to know each other over time. They go out drinking. This area isn't exactly renowned for the nightlife. I'm guessing it's a long trip to the nearest tavern. You got that right. They tell me they go all the way back to Liwe Harbor to drink at Wanmin Restaurant. It rained after work today, so they actually stuck around at the site for a while. But as soon as the rain stopped, they went out drinking again right away. Hey, you're only young once, right? I say, if they can hack it, let them at it. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go talk somewhere else. Looks like our hunch was on the Mora. These newcomers are very suspicious. Drinking in Liyue Harbor, huh? <laughs> Some cover story. I'll wager they've been going to intelligence updates. Good thing it rained today. It means they'll leave footprints. I doubt they'd give themselves away that easily, but let's follow them and try our luck. As I thought, they didn't go to Liyue Harbor, they went that way. <coughs> the footprints stop here. But, judging from the direction, I'm guessing their destination was that abandoned house.
Looks like we were too late. This has got to be where the newcomers rendezvous with whoever they're working for. But look at these ashes. Someone was burning documents not long before we arrived. Could there be anything left? Maybe the wind could have blown the fire out before everything was finished burning. The odds of that are very slim. It's practically impossible. I've checked. All the paper's been burned. There's only ash left now. Why don't we wait for them back at the Black Cliff Forge? They've got to go back there sooner or later. We can't count on that. Clearly they were based here at one point, but it's mysteriously abandoned now. To me, that says that whoever's behind this has moved them somewhere else to throw our investigation off course. Darn! Guess this is where our trail runs cold. Make no mistake, the purpose of our trip wasn't to find any solid evidence. We just need- I smelled something peculiar the moment I came in. Those newcomers probably thought they'd be safe as long as they burned the letters. But what they failed to consider is that paper and ink from different regions produce different odors when they're burned. Really? Pilot can't smell anything. Do you smell anything? There is a certain place with a freezing cold climate where there's nothing but ice as far as the eye can see. Some wealthy people there put floral fragrance in their ink as a way of injecting a little romance into their writing. When that fragrant ink is burned, this is the exact odor that it leaves behind. Exactly. The evidence will soon be blown away by the wind, so it's nothing we can arrest anyone with. But it's all I need. Now I know who we're dealing with. I can plan our next move. Lady Yelon! Oh, thank goodness I finally found you! I thought I'd never see you again! Um... Who are you? Don't be alarmed. This is Upei. He's Wen Yuan and Shang Hua's colleague. I sent him to look into Zhur Yi's regular contacts. Since Zhur Yi likes fishing, Upei thought he might know some of the fishermen and sailors, so he took a boat out to sea to ask around. I left him a note at Yen Shang Tea House telling him to look for me at Black Cliff Forge when he got back. If there'd been an ambush waiting for us there, it means we'd have had some backup. So, what did you find out at sea? Uh, forgive my incompetence. I'm afraid I've come up empty-handed. I asked all the fishermen multiple times, but none of them had any interactions with Jury before. Then the waves got so choppy I ended up falling overboard. Fortunately, someone managed to drag me out. When I got back, I heard that you'd gone to Black Cliff Forge and might need backup, so I went straight there as fast as I could. Didn't even stop to change my clothes. Hmm. Huh. Well, Uncle Tien said that Jur E once bought a recipe from one of the fishermen. Did you hear anything about that at all? What? That's news to me. No, that's not possible. It's absolutely not possible. Lady Yelan, I'm telling you, I spoke to every single fisherman out there, and none of them mentioned anything about a recipe. Interesting. Then I wonder how that even more wonderful fish soup came about. Fish soup? What fish soup? Nothing. Our priority right now is to find a way to get our hands on some solid evidence. Well, any suggestions? Hmm, not a bad idea. Upe, what do you think? Honestly, I've already tried following Jury, but the guy's too cautious. Never meets with anyone suspicious. Okay, so tailing's out. No, we'll still need to tail him. But first, we need to do some groundwork. Groundwork? When you've worked in intelligence for a long time, you'll understand that no one can stay on high alert forever. Especially when he thinks he's about to win. Tomorrow morning, I'll announce his victory at Yuhai Pavilion. Take a guess what you think he'll do next. Be sure to arrive on time. You won't want to miss the show. <laughs>
It looks like we're all here. Well then, time for me to announce the results of the assessment process. I won't drone on about the importance of the Tianshu role. Suffice to say that Uncle Tian entrusted me with the monumentally important task of assessing the candidates. And now, it falls to me to give him a satisfactory answer. All of us here know the score. Don't beat around the bush, just get on with it. Qian Wei has many pioneering ideas. But some of his plans are lacking in detail, and he easily gets into testy exchanges with other people. Mingguo is reliable, but not quite ambitious enough, and because of his personality, he struggles to win people over. In contrast, Zhur Yi is evenly balanced across the board, and enjoys an excellent reputation in Liyue. After much consideration, I have decided to recommend Zhur Yi to the Liyue Qixing. Uh, what? Oh, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Honestly, I'm a little surprised to hear my name being announced. In my estimation, all three of us are worthy candidates for the Tianshu position. As your competitor, I've become keenly aware of your great talents. Would either of you entertain the possibility of working with me in the future? And taking on some of my workload? I'll have to see. Uh, I'm in a bad mood. This is the last thing I want to be thinking about right now. I don't mind. As long as I can help. Okay, well, that's all from me. Jur E, you'll have some preparation to do. It won't be long before you're informed of your official appointment. I hope you will work hard and make Uncle Tian proud. I will live up to the Tian Shu name. On this, you have my word. I should go. I need to pack my things, and then I think a celebratory meal is in order. Would anyone like to join me? Count me out. I'm not in the mood for a celebration. Zhu Yi seems pretty relaxed now. This would be a good time to follow him. Hey, Traveler. Tell me something. What exactly does that guy have that I don't? If you can't answer that, I'm not accepting this result. I, uh, also wouldn't mind knowing. Oh no, if we get stuck here, we won't be able to leave! Follow him. Yes, ma'am. <sighs> we finally got rid of them! Lady Yelan. Jury has gone towards Feiyun Slope. Follow him, quickly. So Jury really sided with the Fatui? But Uncle Tian thinks so highly of him. Why would he do this? Difficult to say, but everything should become a lot clearer when we find him. Sorry, Lady Elon. We lost him. He's too good at this. We weren't able to keep following him without being seen. How the heck did he manage to shake Yelon's subordinates? I guess Jerry Yi didn't let his guard down. Still as vigilant as ever. No, Upe says he's much more relaxed than usual. Maybe it's just how he's wired. Perceptive enough to sense when he's being watched. Don't blame yourselves. Let's not forget he was trained by Uncle Tian himself. Evading detection is not an unusual skill for him to have. If I'd asked you to tail Uncle Tian, 
You'd have ended up at a dead end, too. It's fine. So, where did you lose him? Shinue Kiosk. He only went in briefly. Lupe and I were watching outside the whole time. A few moments later, a man dressed in a completely different outfit came out. Lupe had a feeling that it was him, but we couldn't get close enough to check without blowing our cover. I figured that if we spooked him, it would undo what we've accomplished today so far. Another option would have been to arrest him there and then, but without any evidence, that would have been meaningless. So I stopped Dupe, and I stayed here to wait for you while that meathead went to ask around in Shinue Kiosk. Good work. The fish didn't take the bait, but that's okay. As long as he's still swimming around, we'll find a way to catch him eventually. The key is figuring out what he's trying to achieve. Let's go to Shinue Kiosk. Could you explain to me how that works? A guy like him comes in, changes his whole outfit right under your nose, and you don't even ask him about it? Our customers are free to dress however they please. What grounds would I have to question him? <sighs> okay, fair enough, but didn't you think it was just a little bit strange? Well, maybe I did, but it still doesn't give me the right to stop him. Enough. Let's tone this down a little. I'll make this quick. Just one question. What did he buy while he was here? Oh, he didn't buy anything. He just picked up a bottle of liquor that he ordered ages ago. A bottle of liquor? Yes, a very strong kind. Fiery, with a rich flavor. Not something the average customer would order. This gentleman ordered it in person from us a long time ago. He was only here today to pick it up. Liquor... and wineware. I see. Let's go. Where to? Shigu Antiques. Hey, Miss Lin Long. We're friends of his. He's been telling us how impressed he is with the quality, considering how affordable it was. So we just had to come and take a look for ourselves. Sure. Which model are you looking for? Um, we don't really know a whole lot about wineware. Let's just go with Jur E's choice. 
Would you be able to show us the one he bought? Sure, he picked up his set not long ago. As a quality imitation of an antique wineware set, it has the look and feel of a luxury item. Just so you're aware, we don't have many of this model left in stock, and now that Mr. Jur E has taken one, I'm afraid it may encourage the price to go up a little. Don't worry, price shouldn't be an issue. I'm sure we can work something out. But I'm just a little hazy on one thing. Did Jur E's wineware set include wine glasses, or...? For this set, the wine glasses are sold separately. Minimum purchase is one glass, maximum is four. Mr. Jur E bought... two. Okay. Thanks, Lin Long. Seems there's a little more to buying wineware than I first thought. We'll have to mull it over. Well, don't take too long. We could sell out any day now. All right, see you next time. This is turning into a real headache. Uh, I'd just like to point out that we have the self-professed Grand Master of Fieldwork here to thank for being wholly incapable of tailing an ordinary civilian without being seen. It's not like you did any better. My specialty is information trading, okay? I don't have the physical agility. What's your excuse? I... uh... Fair point. Yelon, so has the plan failed? Oh, if we can't figure out where Jerry went, there's not much we can do. But why was he buying liquor at Shinue Kiosk anyway? To celebrate? If so, it's no ordinary celebration. What do you mean? First of all, Jur E isn't much of a drinker. On some level, he hates alcohol because of what it did to his father. If he was just looking to celebrate by himself, he wouldn't spend his meager savings on an expensive bottle of alcohol, let alone buy a pair of special wine glasses. Now, this is a victory feast, held in honor of Jur E's private sponsor. Whoever this person is clearly enjoys hard liquor and has a very high status. Hence the need for expensive-looking wineware. Now where might we find Fatui who match that description, I wonder? Fatui officials... Hmm, should be either the Snezhnayan Embassy or the Northland Bank. Have both locations surrounded. Take as many people as you need. Lady Yelan, is it time for us to make our move? If so, you can count me in. Get with the program, would you? This is a covert surveillance operation. Jury may be vigilant, but that doesn't mean the same is true for his drinking buddy. In which case, we don't need to change tactics. Just change who we're following. Great idea! So we just need to find out who Jury bought that liquor for and follow them instead! But Lady Yelan, if we get caught, this could become a major diplomatic incident. I'm well aware, but don't you see? Jur E is gambling everything on this. If we really want to catch him, we're going to have to accept a little risk ourselves. Stick to your orders, and make sure we're covering all other bases too. Anywhere else Jur E might be going. I want eyes on those locations. Yes, ma'am. Don't worry, Lady Yelan. Jur E may be a slippery character, but we'll keep a close watch on the movements of all Fatui officials. I'll be waiting for you at the tea house. If I'm guessing correctly, Fatui officials are likely to take action at night. You should go and get ready, then meet me at Yensheng Tea House. Perfect timing. Wen Yuan just sent word that the Fatui ambassador, Yusupov, just left the embassy alone. He's heading in the direction of Qingxu Pool. Qingxu Pool? That's the place Jerry mentioned in his manifesto! It looks like that's where they've arranged to meet. Sensible choice, I'll give them that. Qingxu Pool is always crawling with monsters. 
Most people wouldn't dream of going there. It's one place they won't need to worry about being seen. Oh no, we gotta go get them! Let's go. If my hunch is correct, we just might hit the jackpot this time.